In this video I'll be reviewing a 124 scale model kit from Hasegawa of a Honda Civic RS from 1974. The box art shows an illustration of the car in orange. This kit is part of the historic car series from Hasegawa. Apparently, it is an official Honda licensed product. The exterior of the box looks pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary. Here we can see how the finished model will look like in the same orange color. The model will be 151.5 cm long and consists of 129 parts. I like the box lid artwork, the car looks realistic enough and can be used as a reference illustration. Now let's have a look at the contents. The box looks nicely filled, so let's take out the bags. Here we have the main body part. There is one bag with the transparent parts. It looks like all the other parts are packed together in one bag. It doesn't matter, we'll unbag them in a minute. Then there are the assembly instructions. And lastly, there is the decal sheet. It is a bit of a pain to pick it out of the box, but here it is. Now let's take a look at the parts more closely. First, let's look at the main body part. As expected from Hasegawa, the body part is of high quality with no flash at all. I really like the shape of these cars from the 70s. They just have this uniqueness that you rarely see in modern cars. The lettering on the back is raised, which you can leave as is. But you can also sand it down and use the included decal instead. Unfortunately, the camera has trouble focusing, but I hope you can see it well enough. Next, we'll check out the transparent parts. These consist of a single piece windows unit, parts for the head and tail lights, as well as parts for the indicators. Those three dots on the side window are to simulate extendable rear quarter windows. You can also see that the sun visors are part of the windows here. Now let's see what is inside the biggest bag of this kit. It is quite a stack of sprues. Hopefully it doesn't affect the parts in any way. Here we have the chrome plated parts, which include rims for the wheels, bumpers, embossing for the grille and armatures for the lights.
There are also several small detail parts like hub center caps and logo parts. Then there are two identical sprues with the wheel hubs and parts for the front seats. These capless wheels were quite popular in the 70s and 80s. Two wheels and one seat assembly per sprue. Here we have the parts that are for the interior, like the dashboard, steering wheel, center console, rear seat and the interior tub, but there are also some parts for the suspension. Whoops! Again, the molding is of high quality and will most certainly fit quite well. These white parts look like parts for an optional spoiler, but these are actually attached behind the bumpers, so they can be fitted onto the body. Then, there are the parts for the chassis, like the chassis base, the exhaust, fuel tank and the other suspension parts. Other parts include the windshield wipers, side mirrors, grille, mud flaps and license plates. There are no engine parts, but the shape of the sump is included in the chassis part to compensate. The last parts are in this small bag, and consist of the four rubber tires and four poly caps. Now let's have a look at the assembly instructions. It is written in Japanese and in English, so it should be easy to follow. First there is the parts list, with the parts that are not used marked in grey. There is a list of used colors at the bottom of the page. The colors are relatively simple, so you can easily find alternative equivalents if you don't have the Mr. Color version that is listed here. The instruction leaflet folds out into a long piece, which is a bit of a challenge to hold, but it'll be alright. The assembly begins with the chassis and the front suspension. Most parts are painted black here, so that looks pretty simple. It looks like the front wheels will have movable steering. Next, the exhaust, rear suspension and fuel tank will be assembled. Then, the dashboard is put together. Here, decals are used for the instrument panel and the steering wheel logo. 
After that, the assembly of the interior begins with the rear seat, door panels and the center console with the gear shifter. The front seats are then assembled and glued into place together with the dashboard. During the next step, the headlights are attached to the grille, which is then glued into place on the body, along with its chrome embossing. The window part is also put into place and the rear window defroster, which is a decal, is applied. As we turn the leaflet around, the assembly continues with the merging of the body and chassis. Next, the front bumper, windscreen wipers and side mirrors are assembled. After that, the rear bumper, tail lights and rear license plate unit are glued into place. Then, in the final step, the wheels are put together and inserted, without gluing, onto the axles. The next section covers the painting of the model and where to apply the exterior decals. It looks like many of them are quite small. A decal fixation liquid might be helpful in some cases, for example when the surface is raised or uneven. Lastly, there are some instructions how to correctly apply decals, and below that, there are some general cautionary messages, which are basically standard in modern model kit assembly instructions. After I have finished struggling with the folding of the leaflet, there is one more item to look at. It is the decal sheet. As you can see, there are indeed a lot of small decals. The decal for the rear window defroster can also clearly be seen, but there are also decals to simulate the front and rear fittings for the windows. Furthermore, you can also see the decals with which you can make realistic Japanese license plates, but you can also opt for three types of Honda Civic plates or black Honda plates. Applying these will require the use of a pair of tweezers to hold the backing paper when sliding the decals into place. The camera still has difficulty focusing properly. Sorry about that. And with that, all the contents are now spread out. This model doesn't seem to be too complicated, and the color scheme is relatively simple, so it is doable for somebody with moderate experience. I hope you enjoyed.